Okay, so we're going to look here at uh, this topic here, musical form and structure. Okay, so again, this is part of the uh, new junior cycle um, curriculum syllabus, call it what you will. Um, so first of all, let's look at what learning outcome we're looking at here. It's 111 or 1 1.11. So we have to illustrate the structure of a piece of music through a physical or visual representation. Okay, so this is a bit of fun. Um, as you know, we're in class, we kind of got... Uh, very involved we kind of cross over between art and music here and it's quite enjoyable learning outcome here you can and again these are my tips these are my ways of doing things but feel free to experiment with everything here so first of all what does the structure of a piece of music mean so the structure of anything is how something is made what does it consist of so uh, in music when we talk about uh, structure you might refer to think of pop music for example pop music or rock music modern music uh, we think of songs might consist of a verse and a chorus it might also have a like an eight bar section slightly different which is called a, a bridge or a middle eight sometimes okay there are various different names for that part but the common parts would be a verse and a chorus um, but in music we tend to label them not so much as verse and chorus we tend to label them as a and b we use letters um, and the letters keep going on if there's a third part of the piece of music we call it C if there's a fourth part we call it D and so on but broadly speaking and you will always of course find exceptions to this music is uh, like what, however we group it it fits into you know three or four standard kind of structures and um, we're going to look at the three or four most popular types of structures of music these are by no means every structure possible and of course there are there is music where there's there's no structure um i think when we come to some contemporary music as we've seen before it, 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 it it's just kind of freely composed or freely played so um let's kind of just kind of look at a definition of what form is so form is another term for structure uh, so form if we go to this example here form describes the structure or layout of a piece of music we assign a letter of the alphabet starting from a to each section of a song and describe the form according to the order each part is heard for example if a song has only a verse and a chorus we would call the verse a and the chorus b so assuming these are the only parts of the piece we would say the form is a b Quite often we get as far as a C part and sometimes D, but rarely beyond that. Okay? So if, if we had a song that just had a verse, followed by a chorus and nothing else, uh, we would say the structure or the form of that is A, B. And there is a name for that form, that's binary form. So we get a bit more into that now. So here are the most common types of form. First one is a strophic form. Strophic form, uh, or as put in brackets here, A, 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 is just when we have the same piece of music over and over again. Uh, it doesn't, I've used three A's in the brackets here. It doesn't have to stop at three. It can go on, you can have, you know, five, 10, whatever amount. This would be typically like if you had a pop song, for example, that just had a verse without ever really going on to a chorus or a new type of music. And I look at examples here just to make this a bit more obvious uh, in, in, in a moment. Um, so strophic form. Again, you know, it's not uncommon. Uh, through composed, this is less common, particularly in modern music. Uh, this is where the, the, we, we start off with an A part, moves on to a B part, a C part, D part, and it just keeps changing throughout the piece of music. Uh, an opera would be an example of this, or a, a, a musical. Uh, then, uh, getting on to the two more common ones, binary form, we, we mentioned binary form there a moment ago, when you have an A part and a B part. And that's it, it doesn't come back to the A after, it's just an A and a B. There are two parts to it, so we call it binary, A, B. Uh, the next one here is ternary form and ternary form is where you have your A part, your B part, but it then does come back to the A part. Uh, so that's ternary form. So we're at three parts and it, quite often when we come back to the A part after the B section, uh, there might be some kind of ornamentation, some slight variation on the A part, nothing huge. The melody will, broadly speaking, be the same as you heard the first time around, but there might be some a uh, slight variation of what you heard. Sometimes when we come back to the A part in ternary form, that's called the A1 part. Uh, but that's ternary form. And then rondo form. Rondo form is where you have an A part, it then moves on to a B part, it comes back to the A part before going on to a C part, before coming back to an A part, and so on. The key theme here is that it keeps coming around, that's where it gets its name, rondo, comes around to an A part. There, A, 
B. Back to A, on to another part. So it keeps, every time you hear the main theme, or the A theme, it's followed by a different piece of music each time. Okay, that can go on and on and on and on. It could, like, you know, no matter what, like, you could go on to Z there, I suppose, if you want to, but no, we, we rarely get there past D or E, for example. Um, sonata form um, refers to a kind of a larger piece of work. Uh, so we're not going to deal with sonata form too much here because it's kind of getting a bit beyond what we need to do for this particular uh, form. The main ones here, though, I'd like you to keep in mind are strophic, binary, ternary, and rondo. So A, A, A for strophic. A, B for binary, A, B, A for ternary, and A, B, A, C, A, and so on. So don't feel that just because I've stopped at A, B, A, C, A there, that can go on to A, D, A, E, and so on, okay? So they're the main ones there. Okay. Um, and I think the key thing here is what the, um, there's more about this in your Sounds Good 2 book, it's a very good um, uh, kind of, the, you know, the few paragraphs about this in your in your Sounds Good 2 book, about actively listening to music. So when we actively listen to music, form is one of the features of a piece we observe. So for example, we've spoken before about when we actively listen to music, we listen to things like dynamics, texture, um, tonality, these kind of things, instrumentation, all these kind of things are what we listen to when we actively listen to music, as opposed to passively listen to music, like it's just on the background, we're focused on something else, we're not focusing on music, music is just kind of adding colour to what you're doing, uh, but when you actively listen to music, this, these are the things we listen to. So before we listen for the specific form of a piece, let's start with something uh, more straightforward, and again, this is what we did in class, I'm not going to go through the audio examples here, because um, we've done this in class, but by all means, in the present presentation notes so this is up on the website mr mullins music class.com it's up on our teams page as well so the links to the actual audio files are in that I'm not gonna do that here so uh, what we did in class here is we took different pictures or pieces of art so for example this one here the great wave of kangawa uh, this is actually a wood carving believe it or not i think i mentioned this in class and uh, what we did is we listened to this piece of music uh, claude debussy's la mer which is inspired by this piece of music and we kind of tried to, to hear you know okay where was Debussy how was the Debussy inspired by this picture and did the music represent waves and some of the things we discovered when we listened to the uh, to the piece was that the um the music the dynamics were suddenly loud and suddenly soft representing a wave rising and coming back down again uh, and various things like that um, we then looked at a picture by Vincent van Gogh or van Gogh depending on your pronunciation and we listened to a piece of music um, by Don McLean called Starry Starry Night which was inspired by not specifically this painting kind of more by Vincent van Gogh and his the kind of troubled life that he led, I suppose. Um, but the, the song is called Star uh, Vincent. But the, the sorry, the song is called Vincent. But the you know the first line is kind of a very famous song, Starry Starry Night. It is you know inspired by Vincent Van Gogh and this painting. Um, okay, and moving along, I I mentioned this to you as well. This is a really cool thing. Nothing to do with our music syllabus. It's just a kind of an, an extra thing you might look at. Um, uh, this is the Vincent Van Gogh interactive art thing, which. Has just started to play for me there, so I'm moving on. There we go. Okay, we then listened to a piece called Meditation by Jules Massenet. So again, we just listened to a piece, and I just asked you to draw whatever comes into your head when you listen to the piece. So you can do that exercise you want again. Uh, the recording, the audio recording we use um, features Sir James Galway, an Irish flautist. Uh, and again, all you had to do there was just listen to the piece of music and draw. Well, like, what do you want to draw? What do you think of? Uh, what comes to your head? What inspires your artistic uh, creativity there? Okay, so again, so then we looked at a couple of ideas. This from your Sounds Good book, uh, page 72. So we look specifically at these four items here. So you have to choose one idea that you could illustrate from the suggestions below. Working pairs to compose a melodic motif which illustrates your chosen idea. So we got into groups here, and groups of two, and we had to write a piece. You could choose between jumping, raindrops, climbing the stairs, or a clock. So I don't think, there we go. So I chose jumping. And again, so I wanted to write a piece of music um, to, to, to illustrate jumping. So what I did was here, I started with uh, a low note, and I just realized here that's a wrong note, that should have been a D, my apologies, up to a high D, low D, high D, low D, high D. The music is got is low, and it's high, then 
it's low, it's high, low, high, low, high, low. And if you notice, I put an accent on the, the notes that are low down, just to kind of emphasize the stomp on the ground when you jump down. Again, I wrote in the key of D, uh, and again, apologies for that E, that shouldn't be there, that should be a D at the start. So there's a piece of music that illustrates jumping, very simply. So it doesn't always have to be about these you know grand subjects like a starry night or um, a, a japanese tsunami or wave uh something simple as jumping can be illustrated in music and again we kind of listened to we, we did that a bit in first year as well when we were listening to uh, peter and the wolf where different characters were represented by various instruments and motifs that suited their character and their, their actions okay so again that, that was the activity page 72 from your sounds good to book and when you're revising this topic i would i would recommend going back through that again it was it, it's a fun assignment and it's yeah, uh, you'll enjoy it um so again now i just want to look, have a look at a few examples of these different types of form so strophic form strophic form we said i didn't put it in brackets there but is this a a a a song uh, or format where you just have a verse or whatever just one particular piece of music played over and over and over again uh, amazing grace would be another example of that where you've just got the verse it doesn't develop into a chorus afterwards just case and you can call that a verse you can call it a chorus you can call it a refrain whatever you want but it would just be indicated by the letter a in music a uh, binary form the minuet from the water music suite which we studied in uh, its second year uh, as part of our comparison between Handel and Vivaldi, two composers from the same era, the Baroque era. Uh, so the minuet from the water music suite is just an A part and a B part. Then ternary form, an example of this is Somewhere Over the Rainbow, where we hear the Somewhere Over the Rainbow, da da da. That's the A part. The B part is Someday I Wish Upon a Star, da 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 da. Before it comes back to the A part, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and so on. Okay, uh, finished by rondo form here, A, B, back to A, up to C, back to A, always coming around to the A part there. And a great example of that is uh, Zoltan Kodai's The Viennese Musical Clock. Now, I've given you links in the, in, in the actual presentation that I've put up on Teams. Um, I've given you links to these to these songs on YouTube. So by all means, have a look at them. Um, there's the water music, the minuet from the water music suite as well. That's your binary form. We have an A part, it is repeated before it goes on to a B part and it's repeated and it stops. Okay, that's it, the A form. Uh, the ternary form, there's your example, somewhere over the rainbow and moving on. And then the rondo form, Zotan Kadai's uh, The Viennese Musical Clock. Now, what I'd like you to look at here is how um, we've used different shapes to represent the different parts here. So for example, we've got an introduction to this song. Uh, we have an A and in this, in this um, example here, um, the author of this book has used the letter A, 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 a yellow triangle to represent the A theme. So every time, so what, 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 what she's done here is she has illustrated the song. Starts up when we get to your A part, you've got a triangle. B part is illustrated by a square, in this case, a green square. Comes back to a yellow triangle. So instead of just saying, now it's A, now it's B, we've illustrated using colored shapes. So it's not just boring old text. Okay, and again, there's the last part there, so moving on. And again, now uh, in class, I, I did this, I'm kind of gonna give you the answers here to this, but uh, you know, in class, I've, I kind of, we did this where you have to figure it out yourself. So listen to the following piece of music, choose a shape to represent each section of the pieces. So uh, if you want to pause the video and play the links, first of all, I'm gonna very quickly tell you what the form here is. Uh, so green sleeves is in a ternary form, has an A part, a B part, before coming back to an A part. Um, moving on, The Lakes of Pontchartrain by Paul Brady. If you want to pause it now, I'm going to move on. Uh, this song is uh, in strophic form. It just has an A part. It plays that over and over again. Lovely song. The Corona did a great version of that. The Star Wars theme. Now, the Star Wars theme is um, a ternary form. It has an A part, a B part, and then back to an A part again. And finally, oops, sorry, the Indiana Jones theme is a great example of rondo form. It has an A part, moves on to a B part, back to an A part, then has a C part before coming back to an A part. And it stops there, so like it actually doesn't go on uh, around and around. I think no, I, I may be wrong, there may be a D part in there as well, but broadly speaking, I think Oops, did not need to go that. Sorry, that's the last slide. Okay, so there you go, guys. Uh, brief revision uh, on musical structure and form. Uh, this presentation is going up on mrmullinsmusicclass.com and uh, the presentation is also available on theme, Teams. And you obviously have found this on... Uh, 
the kingshospitalmusictutorials.com so you know that. Okay, thanks guys. Any questions, send me an email. Bye now.